The Supreme Court has again weakened the power of the Environmental Protection Agency. This time it involves wetlands. Justice Justices sided with an Idaho couple who sued after they tried to build a home on what was considered EPA-protected land under the Clean Water Act. The court decided the agency's definition of wetlands was inconsistent. The ruling now says that, clean water, that the Clean Water Act only applies to, quote, wetlands with a continuous surface connection to bodies of water that are waters of the United States in their own right, so that they are indistinguishable from those waters. Jess Braven's going to help us understand what that means. <laughs> Jess, it's good to be with you again. Jess is the Supreme Court correspondent for The Wall Street Journal. So what does this mean, this ruling? What's changed? Well, what's changed is the scope of the Clean Water Act and what counts as uh, waters of the United States. Previously, there was uh, a, a phrase that was coined by Justice Anthony Kennedy from a case back in 2006 that talked about waters that have a significant nexus, it's a very Kennedy-esque term, uh, to waters of the United States, being navigable waters like lakes and rivers and that sort of thing. Uh, that included this property that the Sacketts had in Idaho because water flowed under a berm onto their property and got it all wet and soggy, and that was considered a wetland under the, uh, the previous definition. But conservatives never liked that. Ford disagreed with that ruling or that, that uh, definition in 2006. And now there are more conservatives on the court. And today, uh, that the, uh, they took a much narrower reading and says there has to be this contiguous or, or continuous connection between the larger body of water and uh, properties uh, uh, nearby it. So it, it basically reduces uh, the uh, amount of land, the amount of wetlands that is subject to the Federal Clean Water Act. And briefly, Jess, can you remind us what why the Clean Water Act is getting involved with wetlands, what, what's trying to be protected, and how much land are we talking about here? Well, the amount of land will, you know, it, what, what counts as continuous uh, service connection will probably be litigated in a number of cases. So I can't say precisely, uh, uh, you know, how, how much the, the protected area has been reduced. Um, however, the Clean Water Act was passed in 1972 after water pollution became a nationwide problem and previous federal efforts to fight it had uh, fallen considerably short. Uh, and then it was amended in 1977 and actually strengthened in that year. And the aim is to reduce the uh, amount of pollutants put inside the waters of the United States. But the law doesn't define what the waters of the United States exactly are, and that's why this became an issue for the court. The law does, however, as Justice Alito pointed out in his uh, majority opinion, it is does have a very broad definition of what counts as a pollutant. And it's not just dangerous chemicals or carcinogens or things like that, but it can be just silt or anything that gets dumped in the water, uh, possibly because of a building project when there's an excavation or that kind of thing. So a lot of properties uh, or a lot of projects would be uh, would need to get licenses or permits to, to operate. And so now this is the second ruling in as many years where the conservative majority has narrowed the EPA's reach. Was this decision a surprise and Adding to that, does it suggest a viewpoint uh, from the court on these kinds of issues that we might see play out in future cases? Well, it was not a surprise because they agreed to take this case. The, the EPA had won at the lower courts, and if the Supreme Court takes a case, it means there's at least four justices who think it uh, deserves a closer look. Uh, so it was not a surprise, and it is completely consistent with the decision we saw last year, where the court, by a, a, a six to three majority, narrowed the scope of the Clean Air Act. In fact, Justice uh, Elena Kagan, in her separate opinion today, pointed basically made that point. This is just a, another uh, chapter in the majority's uh, very uh, critical view of federal regulatory powers, and it does suggest that this court, you know, when there is any ambiguity uh, in almost uh, every case. Uh, the government is going to lose. The this, this court takes a very strong view of property rights and wants to see very specific direction from Congress uh, when a federal agency uh, purports to infringe on those rights in some way. Uh, Justice Kagan, again, she said this decision puts a thumb on the scale in favor of uh, property owners, even though Congress passed this law to protect uh, the waters from 
pollution dumped by property owners. So that was her point of view. The majority, however, said that uh, this is a correction uh, and, and takes discretion away from, uh, you know, the, the uh, EPA bureaucracy that many property owners don't don't really care for. But, you know, one thing to keep in mind, John, this case involved a single plot of land in uh, in rural Idaho. And all justices agreed that in that specific case, the EPA went too far, that they were imposing too high a burden on the homeowners in that case. The big impact, however, is how the, the, the new definition Justice Alito spelled out affects uh, agribusiness, uh, industry, all kinds of much, much larger uh, enterprises that create a lot more disruption to uh, the water table uh, than this single uh, plot of land on a near a lake in Idaho. So that's really where you have to look at. That's the real impact is not going to be on individual homeowners. Uh, it's going to be on what where the balance is struck between industry and uh, pollution control efforts. Jess Braven, Supreme Court correspondent at The Wall Street Journal. Jess, thank you so much for walking us through all of that. You bet, John.